Well, hi there, it's Greg Perkins here with the Math 13 Chapter 2 Overview Problems. We've got these age categories here. These are ages of students in one of my previous classes. And first, we're going to go through these basic definitions. The lower class limits would be, if you're looking at this age category, 17 to 19, then what's the lowest age you could be? 17. For the next one, the lowest would be 20. And basically, it's just those numbers on the left, 23, 26, and 29. Next is the opposite side of it. What's the upper class limit? So what is the oldest you could be to be in this category? So that would be 32, but I'll start with this. So the oldest would be 19, and then it's all of the right side numbers, 22, 25, 28, and 32. All right, very good. Next, the class width. Well, the best way to find the class width is go like this. Just subtract these two lower class limits, or subtract these two, or subtract these two. You can subtract any of those on the left-hand side. So, for example, if I subtract these two, then that's going to be 20 minus 17, which is equal to 3. So the class width is 3. What that really means is, if you look in this category, there's 17 through 19 year olds. Well, who does that include? It includes the 17 year olds, the 18 year olds, and the 19 year olds. So that's three different ages. That's what the class width is saying. Next, the class boundaries. Well, if you look at this class and this class, one of them goes from 17 to 19. So it covers these people. And then the next one goes 20, 21, and 22. So that's these people. So then the boundary is between those two. And between 19 and 20, you just average those and find it's 19 and a half. So the class boundaries then would be 19.5. Next would be, well, basically we're just taking this and having a 0.5 added to it. So next would be 22.5. Or if you looked over here on this graph right here, the next cutoff would be right here. So that's going to be at 22.5. And then after that would be 23, etc. Okay, so just following down this list, next would be 25.5, 28.5, etc. cetera. 32.5. Now the thing is, what I've done is once I got to the end, so just imagine that I followed this graph out to the end, I got to 32.5 from this one. Well, there is actually a boundary on this side as well. And since that is not at 17, 16 would be over here, then this one is at 17.5. So since we went all the way down here and we went to 32.5, that means this one has a boundary on each side. It has 28.5 on the left side and 32.5 on the right side. So we need to do the same thing on this one. It's got 19.5 on this side, but Oh, excuse me, I misspoke. This is 16.5 on the left side. So that's the first one, 16.5. Okay, there's number one. And then for number two, we've got this list of data, and we need to create a frequency table with four categories. So in other words, make a table like the one that we just had, but make it from scratch with these numbers. The first thing to do is find the range. So that's merely the biggest number, subtract the smallest number. So from what I see, 20 is the biggest number, and it looks like 2 is the smallest number. Now we are going to be needing to use calculators. This one you don't have to really use a calculator, but we might as well get started with the calculator. So here is the TI-84. We need to first input the data. So you go to STAT right here, and then Edit. And it will show you these lists. It's got six lists built in already. Usually we just use list one, list two, maybe list three sometimes. 
And I went ahead and typed in the data already so that you don't have to sit here and watch me punch numbers. So now what I'm going to do is put the numbers in order. So to do that, I go back to stat and putting things in order is the second thing. Sort, A means ascending. And then once I hit enter, I just have to tell it list one. So you just put second, number one. After you hit enter, the data is now in order. So now I can go back and double check. Did I get it right? Two is the smallest. And if you go down to the bottom, 20 is the biggest. So the range means take the biggest number minus the smallest number. So that's going to be 18. So basically, these numbers range from 2 to 20, which is a range of 18. We now have to divide that into four pieces. So that's going to be the width. So just take the 18, divide by 4. So an 18 divided by 4 is 4.5. Now, none of these numbers are decimals, so I don't really want to use decimals. So what I'm going to do is, instead of using 4.5, I'm going to round it up to 5. Even if that decimal would have been a 4.1 or 4.01, no matter what, you round it up. So use a 5 for the width. OK, now for making the table. So the table needs to have four categories. So here's going to be the classes. And then here's the size of each class called the frequency, which I'll just abbreviate. And now I need to divide this into four pieces, like so. And to make this table, you start with the very smallest number and put it down here at the bottom corner. So you start with a 2. And then you use the width. So you go up by 5. So add 5. This is now 7. Repeatedly add the width. So this is now 12. And then add the width again. And this is 17. The next thing to do is fill in, this one goes from 2 to what? Well, if the next one starts at 7, then this one goes to 6. And for this one, it would end at 11, because that one starts at 12. This one would go to 16. Now, for the last one, you have to have it go up to and include the biggest number. So, you can see this has been going up by 5, going up by 5, so you could go up by 5 and put 21 or just whatever the biggest number is, you could put that there. Now it's a matter of just counting. How many numbers were 2 through 6? So you could just go through this list and look, but since we already have the numbers in order, we might as well use that. So 2 through 6, that would be up to and including this number right here. So this is saying that's the seventh number, so there's seven of them. And then 7 through 11. So let's see. This one's number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So up to that one, there's 8 of them. Next, 12 through 16. So this is the first one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 of them there. And then it is 17 through 21. So that's, this was number 1, 2, 3. That's it, 3. Now, one last thing to do is check the sample size, which we use the letter N for that. So if you add these up, this is going to be 8, and 8 is 16. 16 with 7 is 23. So there should be 23 numbers. And if you look on the calculator, it's saying the 23rd number is the number 20. So it's it's right. Okay, next, create a stem and leaf plot. So these are scores from a calculus test. And basically, the way that I would report the information to the students is by using a stem and leaf plot. I would draw it up on the board like this and say, here's the people that got in the 90s. 
Here's the people that got 80s, 70s, 60s. Hopefully nobody did worse than that. It looks like, no, the 60s. And again, you could just then write down the numbers. So 67 gets split up like this, 6 and 7 for 67. And then if there's somebody else in the 60s like this, it's going to be there's their 6, and then you put their 8 over here. But it's easier to do if the numbers are in order. So once again, I have the numbers typed into this list, list 2. There you can see it finished with 64 and 98, 64 and 98. And again, I'm going to put this in order. So stat, sort it, this time list 2. So you need to put second, the number 2. Okay, now I'll go back and look at list 2. Okay, so now that they're in order, it's going to be easier to create this. So for people in the 60s, there's a 64, a 67, a 68, and a 69. All right, for the people in the 70s, that's going to be there's a 70, a 76, a 77, a 77, a 78, and a 79. And now for the 80s, there's 87, 88, 89, and 89. And then for the 90s, so we've got a 90, a 91, 93, 95, 97, 98, 98, and that's it. So there's the stem and leaf plot. On to the last couple of problems. Oh, I guess we have three more to go. So the family makes $4,000 a month. Let's assume that's after taxes. And they pay $1,200 for rent. And we're supposed to make a pie chart. So a pie chart, as I'm sure you know, is a circle graph. And then each piece of the pie should represent whatever percent this is of their income. So what I did to save a little bit of time is I got prepared before class, and I divided them. So rent was $1,200 out of 4000 4, so that's 30%. The car, if you divide it, makes up 12.5%. Food, 20%. Utilities, 12.5%. And everything else is 20%. So what I think I'll do is I'm going to divide it, because if I put this one and this one together, that would be 25%. That would mean a quarter of the graph. So I could easily do that. A quarter of the graph would be like this. And then cut that into two categories. Each one is going to be 12.5%. So this is going to be the car at 12.5%. And the other one was utilities at 12.5%. So next I could do the food and the other are both 20%. So if I went straight down, that would be 25% because that would be a quarter of the graph. So just make it a little bit smaller than that. And this is food, 20%. And if I went straight across like this, then this would be a quarter of the graph. So I'll just make it a little bit smaller than a quarter of the graph. And that is the other category, where everything else takes up 20%. And then what's left, the only one that's left is rent, which is 30%. So there's a nice, beautiful pie chart. Next, I just made up this example. So suppose that somebody, or you see this graph in a newspaper or something like that, or right here, let's say, and somebody says, by the way, here's teachers' salaries. Women make a lot less than men. What's wrong with this situation? Well, if you look at this, the, the women make 55000 And according to this, approximately, the men make 75000 So that's a $20,000 difference. But if you look at the picture itself, when you look at this bar compared to this bar, this one looks like it's twice as big as this. 
And the reason is this scale did not start at zero. So the vertical scale should always start at zero. Otherwise, it distorts the image. So actually, if you have these numbers, 55 out of 75. So that means that women are making 73% much, as much as men, which, yeah, is not good if it was the truth. Don't believe it because I just made this up. Like I said, I just made this picture up for this example. But the difference between them is women are making 73% as much as men. But if you look at the picture, it looks like women are making half as much. So this needs to start at zero. Okay, then, seems that we have one more. So, this idea comes from a psychology study where they found twins that were raised apart. And basically, they're trying to see, is it genetics or is it the environment in which they were raised that has the bigger influence? It turns out that it's some of each anyway, but is there a relationship? So in this, you're just supposed to make a scatter plot. So since we are not comparing, like in the last one, comparing vertical graphs or vertical bars, we actually don't have to start at zero. Technically, if you don't start at zero, you're supposed to put a little zigzag here saying you cut that part out. And so let's see, this is information in the 80s, 90s, and 100s. So I could put the 80s right here the 90s, the 100, 110, and I don't think I need to put 120. And then over here, likewise, 80, 90. Now, if you cut this out and you started this one at 80, and you started this one at 90 or 100, then that would be distorting the information. But if we're doing the same thing on both, and it's not vertical bars we're comparing, it's OK. So 110 and 120. And then this is just like in algebra class. This is like the x and the y. So you go over to 90 and up to 95, and then 99 and up to 101, 105 and 106, 109 and 103, 111 and 113, 98 and 100, and 89 and 92, a 115 and a 116, and finally 100 and 102. And so that's all we need to do in this chapter. And you can see there is basically a relationship that it's going up like this. Later in chapter 10, we're going to do linear regression and basically find the equation of the line that goes through the middle of the data. But that's for later, chapter 10. Well, that's enough for today.